Hi, I'm Dan Hammermesh. I'm Network Director at the IZA and Editor-in-Chief of the IZA World of Labor. Uh, I'm really pleased to introduce this set of interviews I had over the past week with leading labor scholars in several different countries. Uh, all of them have thought about the coronavirus crisis, the effect on labor markets, effects on the economy. And I just want to chat with them and get a perspective. The interesting thing is the countries covered have had vastly different experiences in terms of how they've managed the crisis, the extent to which uh, cases have occurred, deaths have occurred. I thought it'd be really interesting to have this kind of uh, comparative set of interviews going on. The set of interviews was put together by the co-producers, Theodora Ruseva and Olga Notmeyer, and the script was mostly written by Theodora herself. So I hope you enjoy this, and I think it's just really fascinating to look at how different things are across the different markets. Good afternoon, Helena. It's a delight to have you here. This is Helena Holmund of the University of Uppsala, I believe. Correct? Well, actually, I'm at the IFAU, the Institute for Evaluation of Labor Market Policy, which is located in Uppsala. It's in and Uppsala. I, I know that. Anyway, this mm -hmm. is as part of our series of asking authors in different countries about the impacts of the COVID-19 crisis on their labor markets. And Helena has written an awful lot about Sweden over now many years, I would say. Uh, let me just give you a bunch of questions, let you respond as you wish. Our first question is, do you think among all the things that the government in Sweden may have done over the last two and a half months, is there something in particular that's been effective in reducing the impact of the crisis on the economy? Yeah, so it's there are a number of different initiatives, so it's hard to say which one is the most effective at this point. Uh, I think it's potentially the package of different initiatives, uh, but one that at the moment generates large transfers to the private sector is something called the short time work allowance. So uh, this is a transfer uh, to cover personnel costs, allowing firms to keep their employees on the payroll, uh, but at reduced working hours. So this is basically to keep keep employees within their firms uh, until hopefully the crisis will be over. Uh, Who the money for this? Do they one initiative the among many others. Okay. Do the workers receive the money or do the employers receive the money? No, the worker receives a, um, a salary, but a, a cut a pay, with a pay cut. So it's basically like the, the worker... Uh, uh, works reduced hours, but still receives almost um, the same pay as before, or something more than what, what something more than the uh, what you would expect given the the hours worked. I see. Typically, how many hours are people then working under the program? Twenty hours a week. Um, I think it varies. Uh, I, it can also be uh, less than that. Yeah. I see. Okay. What Next question. Next question I wanted to ask you was, I mean, clearly the impacts of the crisis on different on different parts of the labor market. Uh, how has it affected inequality? In other words, impacts on high versus low skilled people. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the the initial shock has been to uh, the service sector. So we see we will expect to see increased unemployment uh, among low skilled workers, young workers. So uh, despite this government measures, which also include more generous uh, unemployment benefits, it's, of course, likely that um, economic inequality will increase. But then it's also a bit hard to say what will be the long term impact, because when, when the economy picks up again, um, it, it depends on sort of which types of workers that will be in demand at that time. So it, it could be kind of other workers could be the ones that are most uh, negatively affected in the long run. if. We don't know that yet. Question to me of very great interest because I had two of my grandchildren graduating university this last week is how has this affected graduates from Uppsala and other universities and also secondary school graduates as well mm -hmm. coming out of crazy time with no graduation really? How are they doing? Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, obviously there's a risk of. Uh, uh, high youth unemployment. Um, I think the high school graduates will 
have a hard time because uh, the first jobs disappearing are the ones in the service sector, these entry type jobs for, for young people with a high school degree. But of course, the economy is affected uh, more broadly. So also the college graduates will be hurt. So, um, yeah, I think that they will take a, a big hit. Uh, we also expect this year to see a higher uh, college enrollment. So young individuals will try to stay on in education to build more skills, but also just to wait for a better moment to enter the labor market. So that is also uh, one consequence. Have you seen some signs of that latter behavior so far or is this this point? Um, I think that um, I have not I have uh, discussed it with colleagues that this is a potential outcome, but it's also part of the government package actually to increase the number of uh, slots in the education system. Um, Are they increasing the number of teachers to do that in the universities or high schools? Um, no, sure uh, that I have, uh, it's probably unclear. So, um, yeah. <laughs> it's not surprising, is it? Uh, no. <laughs> the next thing is, at all the universities here and in secondary schools, to a lesser extent, there's a lot of online learning going on. I mean, at my college where I teach, they're doing this, they were doing Zoom education during their term. Uh, is that going on or they just closed things down? No, no, there is online teaching going on. Um, absolutely. So I think the the both high school and um, uh, college and university education has shifted to uh, different forms of remote teaching. As I remember, you have children, don't you, in school? Yes, yes. And who's staying home taking care of those children while they're doing online learning? How do you handle yeah. it? In, in <laughs> so the actually, most, most gender equal country in the world, how do you yeah. handle it? The thing is that Swedish schools have uh, um, kept open. Um, only high schools and universities have closed. But I am currently uh, on a research visit in Finland. So my children have been in Finnish schools and here they've closed the schools. And uh, um, I think it uh, might affect gender equality. Um, it's um, I think there is probably a tendency that mothers tend to help take more responsibility for this um, home teaching. But uh, I hope that uh, uh, we won't see that effect in the long run. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, final question I want to ask you about is, we, this is by far the most difficult question. This is a tremendous shock to the economy, to society. Just speculate, if you will, on any long-term changes that you might think would come out of this. Oh, any long-term <laughs> consequence. Um, uh, I mean, it's pure speculation. I won't hold you to it, okay? Purely speculation. No, yeah, no, but I mean, the easy answer is that there is some sort of we will see some kind of technological change when it comes to using these uh, remote uh, tools, both in working life and in education. But uh, uh, if anything, I also think we learn that we need to meet uh, in real life. So I, I think it's uh, I, I, th I think it's really hard to tell. Um, I mean, I think the yeah the okay. yeah, no. I don't think I have a very clear answer. Let me ask you this then. That's very broad speculative about society. How is this going to change your life? If I may ask. Once this is over or? Uh, yes. Once, once, the, the, once we aren't worried about the disease anymore, which mm. is probably a year and a half or two from now. Mm. Um. Uh, you know, I hope it will go back to normal, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, in my, so I'm already in a very fortunate situation where I have been working remotely for many years uh, with a commuter contract. So I, I work a lot from home already. So in my, uh, from my personal point of view, I don't think that will be a, a huge change, but I, I can see that it will be for many other people. Um, but uh, yeah, 
I think uh, hopefully it will not change my life much in the long run. <laughs> I think we all hope that. Helena yeah. Hoffman, thank you very much for joining me. And remember,